It's been a long time since our last update for Overlap 2D. And while we were hard at work and baking the latest version, uh, I thought I'll give it a try and show you our current state of things. Uh, what our version that we have right now can do, what it can't do, and what we were particularly busy doing uh, in latest month. So let's give it a try and run it up. This is the uh, latest version of Overlap to do that you guys haven't probably played around with because it's just on my uh, own uh, GitHub form. And you can see we have this nice logo here. Uh, but before we go any further, let me just tell you what exactly we were doing. You see, uh, we, we wanted to make a better version uh, of Overlap 2D, not only in the term, terms of feature set, but also a better architecture, so you guys can contribute more and more easily to the project. So there, uh, the, the current branch of uh, Overlap 2D is uh, it's called MVC Ashley, uh, and the, the reason it has that name is because firstly uh, we changed to uh, architecture a lot uh, to more of the uh, MVC style. So we have uh, all that is needed to do that. We have commands, we have uh, mediators, and uh, I'll show you more uh, about that later. But uh, I, I really like the architecture right now. It works perfect and. Uh, it's really easy to add things. Uh, and the other word you probably notice, Ashley, um, uh, I don't know if he, uh, many of you are familiar, but uh, the, there is such a thing as an entity framework. Uh, and if you don't know what it is, look it up. Uh, but uh, there is one particular entity framework that is really small and it's called Ashley and it's written for libgdx. Uh, and I'll leave the uh, link in the description of this video. You can check it out. We, we thought that it's a great idea to migrate our current overlap to the runtime to use that. And that took uh, a lot of changes. So uh, basically we had to seriously rewrite the editor from ground up and that's why it took so long. Uh, but let me show you, uh, and that's why some things are not working and some things are working, and that's why it's taking time. But let me show you the current state, like, of the things. So let me just open my test project. As you can see, uh, we have a totally new UI here. Uh, things are more pleasing uh, visually and aesthetically. Uh, and I made this little project here uh, and imported some assets so we can play around. So let's go from the left to right. You, you can see that we have a new tools panel here. And uh, we have this new logic uh, that every tool is currently, uh, it, it's kind of listening for the events. So whatever tool you have currently selected, it will behave differently. And more than that, uh, some tools even have their own properties window. So if, if I have the text tool selected, I can pre-select the font I want and the, any kind of bold, italic, font size, and alignment, and then uh, it will just remember that selection, and when I use it uh, later, it will use that settings. Uh, by the way, you can also notice here that we're currently scanning the system for all the fonts that are there, and uh, so, for example, uh, you can see I just added a font, I'm sorry. Uh, so, if you just, you can click with this tool selected anywhere, and what you will get uh, is a nice label. It's a bit different than how it was done before. You can now choose any font and you can change size uh, and do lots of stuff like that. You can also modify the bound box and then align it to somewhere and it'll work just like that. Uh, and you can see that uh, if you, if you drag and drop image here, it has this simple selection box. And, but if you click on label, it's always with those transformation things. And uh, it's not scaling it, it's just changing the bound box. But if I change to transform tool, I can also modify the transformation here. Uh, so here we come to one of the things, uh, one of the reasons we're not releasing yet, because the transformation isn't working quite properly yet. Let me show you the, why it's not working. So uh, basically, if I want to do something, that this type of thing happens, and this is not what I want it to happen. So yeah, this is 
why it's not released yet. One of the three reasons. Uh, so what else? Uh, let's see, we have the item tree again working. Uh, we have all the alignment tools as before. As you can see, the lights kind of migrated here. And if I just click here and enable lights and make it darker, and I can just click here and then use a light tool to drop some lights on the scene. And you can see that we have a follower, we call, we call these things followers. Basically what they do is they follow uh, an entity. And light has this little icon as a follower and it's, it's yellow when selected and white when it's not. And it's pretty nice. So you always know how to select your light and move it around. Uh, so yeah, so let me just delete that and just turn off the light system. Uh, we, we already have working, uh, converting to the composite and going inside and you can see that this thing is working. We can go out, we can go in, we can nest things inside each other, hopefully. And yeah, and we can go back to root and it all works. So that took some time to get it working. The other thing is because we're currently using commands for all the actions, like moving things around or adding new elements, the control Z finally really works well. So it's just perfect. Before we had some very weird system for that. And right now it's perfect. Every, every action is revertible. And I'll show you how in the code later. Um, what else? We have this grid size thing. So you can set your grid size to something like, for example, uh, let me drop this here and uh, let's set grid for 100 or something. Uh, and now you can see that it, it kind of moves in grid. So if I just copy paste that here and then just copy paste again and that's what happens. So that is if you want to make a tiled type of something uh, very useful for this type of elements. So the size of this thing is 148. Let me put this as a grid size. And then we can kind of copy paste that. No, we can't. Yeah, we can see it just goes here and then here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, we do have zoom in and zoom out working. We can zoom in and zoom out just like that. We've, I'm using control plus and control minus to do that. And all the selections work perfectly with that. Uh, besides that, we do have some new windows here that you can always position here on top. They will never be done. Uh, we don't yet remember the uh, selection, so after you close the overlap, they will be closed again, but we'll fix that soon. And uh, one of the windows is uh, the property box for sprite animations. So when I have a, uh, let me just drop a non-animated object here. So when I have this selected, the sprite animation shows that there is no item selected. But if I select the item that is sprite animation, I can now edit the animations and I can also choose between uh, different loop uh, play modes uh, because we're now using libgdx animation class, which is very nice. Uh, and we also can uh, add custom variables from here to any object and it'll be uh, just always here on top of everything. So whenever you select things, you just update it. It's very helpful. Uh, uh, the other thing is probably, um, well, we moved the create a new resolution to here. You can see it's not done yet. It's kind of in the bug state. And uh, the other new stuff here is a new project that you can see we have a new field called pixels per world unit. So we're going to be changing uh, our system a little bit so you don't code in pixels but you code in world units. It's going to be nice. Uh, you can see that we kind of have this type of arrangement for particle effects here uh, and they have their own follower like this. You can move them around. Let me change the grid to one so they will move more smoothly. Uh, and here, uh, I just wanted to show you something with library items. That's a new feature here. 
uh, let me create a new composite item. Something like that sounds like a good idea. Convert it into composite, and then uh, you can see it says it's not in the library because, well, it's not. So you call it object one or something similar. And now it's kind of linked to object one. That means that if I copy paste it, the copy will be also linked to object one, which means if I modify that, put a Twitter or something here, then this one will be updated as well. Uh, now I can copy that again, and or I can drag and drop that directly from library, and they're all linked to object one. I can click here to unlink it, and now this one is not in the library. If I go inside and change it, it will just affect this one. I can add it back to library with a different name, object two. And uh, what I'm saying here is basically the library management is much more easier right now. Uh, so yeah, we got that working. Uh, and basically that's the current state of what we have. Uh, the things missing, there are just a few things missing. As you can, as I said earlier, the transformation aren't quite working. Not on everything, uh, nine patch transformations work just fine, but just usual images have some work to do on just yet. Uh, the other thing is uh, the click listeners are currently ignoring the Z index. So right now, uh, if this item is above, I selected it, but if, if I move it uh, down, uh, or, uh, or move this one up, it will still select this one. So it's kind of a little bit messed up. Uh, and the third problem is related to just finalization of the importing the assets uh, and things like that. When, when we're done with that, we'll be totally ready for releasing the next version to you guys. And it's pretty stable. Uh, I enjoy working with it and it's much, much better than what we have when the previous version. And, and the most importantly, it's it made the way you guys will be a lot more, it will be more easier for you to add things and modify things. Uh, I can just quickly show you the current structure of the project. Uh, we now have this art folder with textures and all the UI and PNG files inside. Uh, whenever you run over Lock2D, it will see if, uh, if you modified this folder with the new images or something, and it will regener regenerate the uh, Atlas file. Uh, we are using uh, a standard uh, LibGDX widget system, so styles and all that. Uh, Besides that, uh, uh, you can see that uh, here in comments, we have a lot of comments to do things and uh, there are several types of that, like if you want to delete an item, then it's it's an entity modifier vertical command, which is uh, uh, means that if it modifies an entity, so it has to check for any library item changes, it extends the vertical command. Uh, which is basically a command that has to be reverted. It's provided do action and undo action, and you have to write that. Uh, so any action here is, it, it will work with control and Z. Uh, and then that just goes to a simple command that does nothing. Uh, now, besides that, uh, here you can find all our boxes that are uh, everything visual in overlap to d like this or this or this we'll call it a box and uh, it has its view and it has its mediator and mediator is doing all the logic uh, and view is doing all the showing and drawing uh, obviously they talk with each other by sending each other notifications or registering for notifications to listen to them uh, and uh, that's a standard we're using pure mvc to do that uh, so yeah, that's that. And as, as it goes for the runtime, it's a lot different than it was. It's, uh, it's very strongly based on entity framework on Ashley. Uh, you can see that we're, the only thing left from the old runtime is the VO objects that describe how we write the JSON data to save or load the final uh, data. 
Uh, the, the rest is kind of, we have the systems too for different type of objects. We have the rendering system that does all the rendering and it uh, has to be improved yet. We have a uh, factory for creating entities depending uh, on, on the data and uh, different factories for each type of object. It's pretty neat. Uh, and yeah, we have components that are basically at that database that describe all types of items here. Uh, uh, you guys are welcome to take a look at everything. Uh, somewhere I'll leave the link in the description but you're welcome to visit my own github here um, why is it so hard to find okay yes here uh, so yes you can go to overlap D and check out my MVC Ashley branch as well as you can check out the runtime uh, again on my fork, uh, it should be called Dev Ashley. So these two work together. Uh, and you can take a look uh, or play around with it if you want to, but as you can see this stuff is not ready yet. Uh, so I hope this was fun and answered uh, some of your questions. As soon as we finish all the stuff that I said we have to finish, we'll be ready to release and uh, I'm really looking forward to it.